Welcome to another episode by Engineering Today, and we're back with three news for you. It's hard to believe in 2020 that many people of our planet don't have internet facility at a low cost. So, SpaceX will provide internet connection at an affordable price for all people through Starlink with an easy setup, starting from Canada. SpaceX had applied for a license to the Canadian Radio, Television and Telecommunications Commission in May to get their basic International Telecommunications Services license. SpaceX had to face a number of hardships, but in June, Canadian citizens supported SpaceX for this issue. Above 2,000 of Canadian citizens gave their support for SpaceX. In September, Federation of Northern Ontario Municipalities supported SpaceX to bring Starlink internet service in Canada. Phonom says at their board of directors meeting, the board adopted a resolution during a recent meeting in Hearst, held both electronically and in person, supporting Starlink, a satellite internet service that's being developed by SpaceX. The resolution also caused on the Canadian Radio, Television and Telecommunications Commission CRTC, to permit and expand the company a basic international telecommunications services license. Phonon believes that the Starlink program is our best option, says Danny Whalen, the president of Phonon. Before this meeting, a couple of months ago, Canadian Municipal Councillor Kenneth Flack says in a letter, I encourage the Canadian Radio, Television and Telecommunications Commission to accelerate the acceptance of this application for provisioning of services such as this without delay as it will also provide the capability for our communities to deal with and recover from this pandemic. The SpaceX Starlink Internet Services project as a whole specifically benefits those most in need and the most disadvantaged. In the first week of October, James Cumming, the Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry, criticized the politicians for delaying to give license to SpaceX. He also said, We've heard plenty of big plans from the Liberals over the past five years, but very little delivery and many unsatisfied Internet users. However, a new entrant, SpaceX, may be able to offer connectivity that rural Canadians and their businesses have been desperately needing. They're not asking for a single cent just for their license to be approved. In the middle of October, an official petition was created and shared on social media by Canadian citizens for the approval of SpaceX Starlink license. They asked government authorities for this. After that, on October 15th, SpaceX received their license from the CRTC. Their Secretary General, Claude Doucette, says in an approval letter to SpaceX, the Commission received 2,585 interventions regarding Space Exploration Technologies Corporation BITS application. After consideration of the comments received, the Commission has approved the application and a BITS license is enclosed. SpaceX has plans to serve Internet facility in southern Canada and the northern United States from the end of this year. Let's quickly check some latest updates regarding SpaceX partnership with Microsoft. Microsoft announced their partnership with SpaceX on a nuclear weapon defense system project for the Pentagon. It was announced on Tuesday. This project aims on developing a system capable of detecting missile launches anywhere in the world. It will also help in raising early alarm to warn people and to help in interception of missile. Microsoft describing the working of the system in a blog post, SpaceX recently won a contract with the Space Development Agency to build new satellites separate from the Starlink system in support of a space tracking layer defenses system capable of detecting and tracking ballistic cruise and hypersonic missiles. Ballistic missiles capable of carrying nuclear warheads emits infrared waves from superheated engine exhaust, which can be detected by Pentagon Project. Microsoft wrote, The two companies also plan to further connect Starlink with Microsoft's global network, including Azure Edge devices, integrating SpaceX ground stations with Azure networking capabilities. The collaboration also includes connecting Starlink's high-speed, low-latency satellite broadband with Azure's new modular data center. Reuters reported that company will use its Starlink satellite factory in Redmond to build four experimental satellites equipped with infrared sensors. These satellites will be used to detect missile launches around the planet. 
This will help to reach the goal of space tracking layer network of defense. The project is worth 149 million US dollars. Microsoft's all new devices would be linked through Starlink, and SpaceX is planning to launch about 42,000 satellites and link them with lasers to provide faster network connectivity. Microsoft also said they have plans to make modular data centers and mobile platforms through which cloud computing systems can be spread to every corner of the world. SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell said, We will be delivering to the government a number of satellites that host a capability to protect against ballistic weapons, and we're really proud to have Microsoft on our team there. Now let's discuss a news regarding China's moon mission. At last sequel of moon mission plans of China got revealed. In our planet, major countries linked with space research and also planning to send their moon missions within a short course of time. China proposed to other nations that all their Chang missions together would form the part of planned International Lunar Research Station. China is already operating Chang 4 on the far side of the moon to collect samples. They are also planning to launch another spacecraft to the moon, Chang 6, which is scheduled to be sent either in 2023 or 2024 having two goals of landing at the South Pole of the Moon and studying the region. Chang 7 will be sent around 2024, whereas Chang 6 will work as a backup for Chang 5. If Chang 5 mission is successful, then it will be resent to the South Pole of the Moon. China National Space Administration gave many institutes the responsibility to develop payloads for five spacecraft in Chang 7 mission. It was given for CNSA's Lunar Exploration and Space Engineering Center. A special Long March 5 rocket is required to launch the 8,200 kg mission consisting of an orbiter, a relay satellite, a lander, a rover, and a mini flying craft. They will also send a high resolution stereo mapping camera and wideband spectrum mineral imager, gamma ray spectrometer, synthetic aperture radar, magnetometer. Using all of these systems, the Chang 7 will easily get information about the moon's surface. The rover will carry a lunar penetrating radar, a magnetometer, a panoramic camera, a Raman's spectrometer, and a mini flying craft will carry a water molecule analyzer to take measurements in the far region of the south pole in the moon. If they find water in the moon, then future crewed missions would be easy. The relay satellite will carry a very long baseline interferometry VLBI system for Earth to Moon VLBI measurements. It will help in the detailed radio astronomy observations. The lander will have landing and topography cameras and other instruments to measure the heat flow through the moon's soil. The lander will also have an extreme ultraviolet camera, a seismograph and a thermometer. Another instrument will neutral atoms in Earth's magnetosphere, which extends beyond the orbit of the Moon. After completing Chang 7's missions, Chang 8 is planned. That mission will include test technology for using local resources and manufacturing with 3D printing, according to Chinese press statements. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.